Uh, in this video, we'll show you how to quickly get started with the new Sandblaze DT4 system for your testing. Um, the system is designed to be uh, lightweight and portable. Um, it comes in this optional travel case. Um, so if we just open up the case, uh, we can take out our system. You'll see the system's packed in here um, and a box full of uh, accessories and cables are on the side. Um, if you open up the accessory box, you'll notice there's an Ethernet cable, um, a power cable, and then um, an optional serial cable for serial connection and a USB connection for expansion USB ports internal to the system. Um, once we have this, we can just go ahead and hook up the power cable to the system and then the Ethernet cable to our uh, laptop we'll use for testing. Once the power cable and the network cable are connected, we can go ahead and insert our uh, drives we want to test. Uh, and I've got a U.2 drive also that we can use for testing, so you can just insert that. So I've got an EDSSF drive we can stick in um, slot over here. Um, the system also supports uh, M.2 drives that you can install, uh, taking off the cover and installing it internally, um, as well as a slot for a PCIe slot-based NVMe drive. Once they're inserted, we can go ahead and turn on the system. Just push the green uh, power switch here in the front. Uh, once it's fully booted, you'll see an IP address for the system, and uh, that's what we'll use to connect to from our uh, laptop, and then we can get started with our testing. Once the system's powered on, we can go ahead and um, open up our laptop and open up a web browser and just connect to the address that's uh, shown on the front display of the DT4 system. Once you connect to the GUI through the web browser, you'll be presented with this screen. This is the main home page for the system. To get started testing, we can click on the SB Express Manager link in the left-hand menu. This opens up a page that shows a representation of the drive slots in the chassis at the top. So you'll see there's six slots and four are green, which means they're populated, and two are white, which means they're empty. Um, the speed of link is listed here, 8 gig, and these are Gen 4 16 gig links. You can then go ahead and select a drive you want to test. So in this case, I'll just pick this drive in slot number 2. Um, I can then scroll down to the section where it says Certified by Sandblaze. This is a list of all the built-in tests that the system ships with. Um, you can then go ahead and select uh, any number of tests you want to run on the device. For this case, I'm just going to select the level 1 basic um, generic I.O. commands. Once I select that level, you'll see a list of all the scripts over here on the side. Um, I can then go ahead and just add them to my test suite. Once the tests are added, they'll show up at the top here in this list of uh, scripts. Um, so here's my 20 tests I selected. Then to simply get them running, I would just click the start button here and it will run all the tests in order. As they're running, you'll see status is being shown if they pass or fail or if they're skipped. Um, you'll notice that these links now are clickable, um, so if it, while it's running you can get a, a, a pop-up status report uh, for that individual script. Um, in this case it just passed, so it tells you what it did, um, version of software it used, uh, and uh, what, what command it issued. Um, for example, here's one that failed, so we can get status on that as well. If I click on that, um, you know, it shows a lot more information. You can scroll down and find um, what the failure was. In this case, this also had some skipped uh, features or uh, parts of the test that were skipped because it doesn't support the, that particular feature. Um, you'll see here's the failure. This command issued was uh, came back with a failed status. Um, and then there was a bunch more things skipped because the device doesn't support uh, these commands. Um, there's also the skip status. You'll see this test here was skipped. So if we open that up, um, and then again, we'll see this was skipped because um, this command uh, that it was trying to run isn't defined in the spec that's supported by this device. So the test was skipped. So we'll just go ahead and let that um, finish. Uh, once it's done, we can take a look at the final test report um, and show how to export it in a nice human readable manner. So now that the test is finished, you'll see they're all passed. Um, and then up top here in this bar, you'll see there's a report button. If I click that, that's going to pop open a window showing um, a detailed uh, report of all the tests that were run. So it has co columns for how many that were run, passed, failed, and skipped. Um, if I scroll down, there's a brief summary of the report, I mean, uh, of, of the results down here. Um, you can then individually click detail on uh, to expand any, any one of them of interest, or you can click detail at the top, and it'll uh, open up all the ones that were, you know, non-passed, so failed or skipped. Um, 
and then it'll build them into the report here. Once we have this, we can then print this um, in a nice uh, format by clicking the print button. Um, you'll have options to save it as PDF or uh, depending on, uh, on, on your system. Um, but for now, I'm just going to open it to show you what, what the PDF would look like. The report then gets generated um, in a nice format. It shows the serial number and things like that and the uh, version of the script that was run on the first page. Um, and then scrolling down, there'll be a table of contents and then the full test report um, with all the information on the, the, the tests that were run. You'll notice that the detail is shown just for the ones that were uh, had the detail shown on the previous page. In our case, the ones that were uh, non-pass status, so either failed or skipped. Mm -hmm.